Thank you very much, Kagura Omuni, for joining us. Uh, Kagura is the chief executive at Kobo 360, uh, a logistics company in the continent. Now, um, the African Union in 2018 took a very drastic step while meeting in Rwanda, Kigali, and uh, they basically set a path for the adoption of a, a, you know, an African free trade area which would connect you know the african market mm -hmm. as a whole and basically promote trade in uh, in the continent so as a player in the logistics sector mm -hmm. you've done this for quite a while yeah um, to what extent would you say this framework would improve you know the ease of doing business uh, perhaps what bottlenecks is this going to clear Okay, so the first thing is the removal of uh, the non-tariff barriers mm -hmm. that exist. Uh, this could be paperwork, custom clearance documents that are needed in every border that you, you know, your goods cross over. Um, I think that is a big deal to us in logistics because it's not just about the distance that one travels, it's also about the time. So if you have cargo that is delayed seven days at a border, that's a huge cost on the transporter, which then passes it down to the consumer. And so imagine a world where, you know, you get to the border in less than 12 hours, you've crossed over to the next side. I think that changes for us. And so that's why in the logistic business, so as Cobo 360, we're very excited about this free trade agreement. Um, the second thing is that with the reduction of tariffs or um, the ease of trade, mm -hmm. the markets are going to grow bigger. So if you're a manufacturing company in Kenya, as an example, all of a sudden, and you're an SME, it's now easy for you to expand beyond the Kenya borders. So if you are only serving one country, you can serve five. That to us as logistics means, mm -hmm. I'm going to move your goods from Kenya to another country. Um, and I think an interesting insight is also we have countries in Africa that are food baskets, as an example, because movement of agriculture is big in Africa. And then we have countries that are almost desert and so struggle with food security. Now, with the barriers that exist on the, on the, on the borders removed, it means you can actually move food quite fast. So you don't need the complicated um, kind of transport trucks that actually can keep food fresh for too long. So it brings down the cost. It also means that perishables, you know, don't perish. So you can actually supply food from one market to the other, improving food security in the continent. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, we've had, or rather mm -hmm. we have similar uh, trade, uh, I mean, common market or free mm -hmm. trade uh, uh, agreements within uh, regions, like for instance, in East Africa, we have something similar to this. And there have been challenges implementing this, mm -hmm. th 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 these agreements you've had countries for instance imposing tariffs on goods coming from other countries uh, do you think this is something that could actually impede the implementation of uh, this new framework i think what what is different about this agreement is the is the recognition that as african states we need it um, I think there's always teething problems. There's nothing that is perfect, especially at the beginning. Everybody wants to understand the exact impact mm -hmm. the agreement will have on the country. And so it will be baby steps. But there's one thing that's very clear, the understanding of what this means for trade and commerce in the continent, and also what this means for people like us in logistics, for manufacturers. Um, and the other thing is that Apart from just the tariffs, there's also the recognition that there should be standardized, you know, regulation that is acceptable in the different countries. So things that have been causing problems will be something that is dealt with. But definitely, a few teething problems will be there. Mm. But we're, we're taking a step in the right direction. Yeah. Now, one of the major hurdles that uh, I mean, players in the logistics sector have faced, mm -hmm. and this is something that has, you know, negative impact on trade mm -hmm. and business is uh, the length of time it takes to clear goods from the port. We've had uh, similar issues in Kenya, the president the other day giving a directive, an ultimatum that goods must be cleared within a specific period of time. Of course, that did not happen as envisaged. Uh, what do you think would need to happen then to 
make sure that um, goods are cleared in time in ports of entry so that you know we are able to maximize on the gains of this framework so what you see there's quite a bit of inefficiencies that exist generally in the logistics and supply chain industry. Now, as a company, Cobo 360 recognizes this. And what we do is the use of technology and big data analytics is one of the things that can actually solve these problems. Yes, there are problems that are due to human inefficiencies, but sometimes it's just the data in terms of the movement of goods, something got stuck and it led to a backlog of everything that's happening. And so what we see that can be done in logistics or how this can be improved is how do you incorporate technology um, all the way through the people who are moving goods all the way to the truck owners to the logisticians to the owner of the cargo and then what do you do with that data how can you use the data to create reverse logistics such that everything is moving all the time because you have the data that tells you when things arrive when things move when things are cleared i mean so part of the solution to this problem is saying is really thinking about it holistically, um, looking at data and incorporating data in dec decision making, and of course technology. And so this is where companies like Cobo 360 come in from the logistics perspective. Yeah. Yeah. So over one billion people in the population mm -hmm. and a combined uh, GDP of 3.4, 3.5 trillion. Yes. Uh, what benefits should Africans or let me just say business people in the continent expect once, I mean, this agreement comes into force okay. on Sunday. Okay. So one of the things is that in intra-African intra trade, so trade amongst African countries, majority is of the trade is non-extractive goods that are traded. So this means that it's agriculture and we're talking about manufacturing. Now the population in Africa is young. We need jobs for the youth. These are two industries that actually employ a lot of people. And so based on the UN data, the, the agreement is supposed to increase trade within Africa by about 42%, uh, 52%, sorry. And what that means is that the number of people who will have access to jobs will go up. So you're not only a major manufacturer, but you're somebody, you're a young person looking for a job. There's more, more opportunities in manufacturing and in trade. So that's one of the things. As a business owner, again, as I alluded to, your market has increased. There are more people to serve. There are more needs to be met. Um, your goods are competitive because, again, the, the average 6.1% tariff that is imposed is reduced or removed. So therefore, your goods can compete as much as goods coming from outside the African continent. And so really, opportunities are growing. And so, and it's quite great because this applies to SMEs who make up 80% of the businesses in the region. And so we, we're going to see jobs, we're going to see existing businesses expand, and we're going to see Africa relying on itself. And for us in logistics, it means more goods to move, um, things to be more efficient about, um, thinking about how to connect the different hubs that exist in Africa uh, to really meet the new supply chains and regional hubs that are going to be formed. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, K Kenya is bidding to, to host <coughs> the African Continental Free Trade Area Secretariat uh, mm -hmm. here in Nairobi. And, and of course the Ministry of Foreign Affairs has said uh, this is something that will actually solidify Kenya's stand in the region, of course, as a hub for business in the region. And um, f uh, my question would be, um, as, as, as uh, players in, of course, uh, logistics sector, what is it that uh, you'd, you'd be engaging the Secretariat on in terms of uh, making sure that uh, well, should they be based in Kenya or wherever else in making sure that we are actually able to implement this uh, trade uh, agreement uh, in a manner that will boost business as envisaged? So, yes, of course, Kenya would like to host the Secretariat. Mm. So as COBO 360, we serve multiple countries in Africa. Mm. And so we think the Secretariat is important because this is the function, the body that's responsible on the actual day, to day running mm. 
of this um, the agreement. And so we see ourselves as a partner, as Kobo 360, you give feedback on what's happening. If you're moving goods across the entire continent, then you can be able to you have data on how long it used to take to actually move goods across the border mm -hmm. before the agreement. And now you have data on what's going to happen after. So you're able to actually communicate feedback. Where are the places you're seeing the challenges? Mm -hmm. um, whether it's hosted in Kenya. As a Kenyan, you'd say you would love that. But as a company, Cobra 360, we're quite open because we see Africa as one big market. And we think that there is opportunities. Where it's, whether it's going to be held, hosted here or any other any other country that has bid to actually host the secretariat, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So finally, um, perhaps your thoughts on um, the the meeting that is coming up uh, this Sunday. Um, uh, your expectations, of course, there are more countries that are expected to join to the, the, the the agreement. Moving forward, uh, what are expectations from this uh, meeting? So definitely as to, uh, to what you have mentioned, that majority, actually if all 55 member states ratify the agreement, I think that would be a big deal. But the second thing is now that it's becoming operational, mm -hmm. now can we start seeing these changes in terms of the tariffs? Mm -hmm. We would like to hear communication on what happens on the tariffs, uh, what happens in terms of the paperwork that is needed on border, uh, on the borders. I think these are the first two steps that need to be taken. Even as now businesses begin catching up and realizing that they have more beyond the borders in terms of their market size. And so for us, it's the immediate change or as soon as possible in terms of uh, the borders. And I think there's that high expectation from everybody. We are all waiting uh, because it changes our business. It changes uh, logistics for everyone in logistics. Yeah. All right. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you so much. much.